<laughs> exactly. Now, when we're talking about Santorini, I got really excited because it's not just vampires that are my passion. Santorini is um, the island that, as both a geologist and a multidimensional person, you know, both my passions there meet because that's where the myth of Atlantis came from. Yes. Yeah. Now, in like 1600 and some years BC or before Common Era, the islands of Santorini, um, which then it was not called Santorini, it was, hold on, I want to check my notes because I'm all excited now. And uh, it was called Theros uh, or Thera. Um, it erupted. And the majority of the island blew up. If you look at it now, it's like a crescent-shaped island. But once upon a time, it was a huge island with a big <laughs> volcanic cone in it. Now, Kim, you've been there, right? Yep. And you saw, you, you've seen the, the uncovered archaeological finds there and how beautiful and refined they are. Oh my God. Yeah. Some of them are just amazing how, you know, they're, they're thousands of years old, but they look like you uncovered them and they're maybe 50 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting thing um, about that is Santorini, the island used to be a lot bigger. And when they had the explosion, which was kind of, I guess, more on the North side, so to speak, it's still the craters there and you can actually go over there and go, um, snorkeling and diving you know as tourists and stuff like that because they still have the whole upper shell and then they have down below because it once it exploded it I guess collapsed in on itself mm -hmm. so now it's just water there's no volcano underneath uh, uh, for, right. for that for it's that sunk in. yeah into the water yeah um yeah. and then you have a big lapse between it and then you've got what's left of you know it's still Santorini, but over here. So it's, it used to be a really big island, actually. I was really surprised. Mm -hmm. um, and the neat thing is, is if you go to Santorini and you're at the uh, sunset part where you, you know, if you're looking at the sunset and you look a little bit over to your left, you can see the volcano or what's left of it. That's the weird part. So yeah, yeah it's, it, it's amazing. Just the whole, the, yeah, de definitely take the guided tours because they have some good stuff. They have some wineries um yeah the fish yeah. yeah it's just it's an amazing place and uh funny okay. thing is they have a city called not thera but fira mm -hmm. so it's really close to the name of the what the used to be called yeah and now if when you look at it when you go there they had an entire um they had toilets they had a sewer system they had fresh water yeah. that ran all through the city it was yes. a, yeah, and you can see, like, I've only seen photographs, so I haven't been there, but when you go into the archaeological areas, you can see how refined the people must have been. It's Yeah, so the part you're, well, at least the one I saw when this one went down, it was another island, and, and it's failing me, um, but that collapse happened when, um, was it Pompeii? No, no. Nope, I'm, I'm getting my times mixed up. Anyways, yeah. but they, they had this stuff on the second floor mm -hmm. and it's all still intact where you can see it. But the thing is, is where you, you have to go into like a cave to see it because the way it collapsed and covered itself, mm -hmm. it's inside a self-sealed cave. It's really bizarre, but yeah. yeah, the stuff is intact. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, you had stuff that was this thick that could just cracked in half and it was now they're like this. It, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So on the island of Santorini, or then Thera, and this was a Minoan civilization, they were really advanced. We're talking over 1600 BC. So we're talking 3,600 years ago to 4,000 years ago, or even further. They were advanced to even the ancient Greeks, anyone around. 
And they, so they kind of looked down their noses on everyone. And if any ships got too close, they would go pirate them, bring them in, enslave all the people, plunder all the booty because they thought they were better than everyone else. It was their right to like take whatever they wanted. So when this erupted, again, 1600 before common era, whoever could flee did. And those who were able to flee were people who had access to boats, etc. So mostly it was like a lot of wealthy elite got off the island. And a lot of them went to southern Greece near uh, Athens, Athenas, and they were immediately enslaved. So <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine you have these like Kim Kardashian type people who are now your slaves and they're like, oh my God, you called this a civilization? In our civilization, we have this, we have that. Oh my God, you're cracking my nails. So they boasted about how amazing everything was. And as you know, when you, you know, the big fish story, their boasts became, you know, more, more and more. Um, I, it is claimed that they did have like a wind gliding, you know, they had flying ability, they, they were advanced, really? but I don't know where the actual claims and their then boasting about their claims, like where one ends and the other meets. So all of this, 1300 years later, Plato is Mr. Philosopher in Athens. And he's like, oh yes, Atlantis. And now Atlantis, the story, when he talks about Atlantis, it was partly to be a parable between Argos, no, not Argos, um, Sparta and Athens, because they were at, you know, always warring with each other. So part of it was a parable between Sparti and Athenas, but part of it was also from all the myths that he had heard of what we now call Santorini this massive place, he said, greater than what, you know, great land masses that sunk beneath the sea. You know, geologically speaking, a great land mass would not sink beneath the sea, but a volcano will erupt and collapse in on itself. Like yeah. if, yeah, so when people, and he, when he describes where it is, keep in mind, he wasn't like Mr. Like I'm going sailing around the world for the 18th time. So, <laughs> He relies a lot on what information is brought to him. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So when he talked about beyond Heracles's uh, pillars and this and that, we're like, oh, we can map into this one. It is definitely the island of Santorini. Now, one of the ways, this is how big the explosion was. When geologists are doing a core sample of the earth, which means they drill and they get like a tube of earth, you know, like this big or bigger. They drill as deep down as they can go before they hit, you know, too much bedrock. So they get these massive cores. I mean, long, like quarter mile long, or, you know, it depends on the purpose and the why and wherefore, but some of them are long and they can, document timelines by looking at it. When they hit the eruption of the island of Santorini, the ash from that volcanic eruption literally went all around the world. So this is considered a geologic marking all around the world to 1600 BC. Yes. So when we talk about, oh yeah, a volcano erupted, a volcano so much bigger even than Mount St. Helens, a volcano erupted so big and so bad that the entire world for a year was cloaked in somewhat ashy effect. Hazy days, darkened nights, can't see the stars for a while. Yeah. You know, there, I don't know the period of time, so I'm not gonna, but there was a period of time where the days were dark and the stars were hidden and the sun was hidden, covered the entire world with ash. So yes, that's going to have you know, if you're sharing stories and little Plato is listening, that will definitely be in his mythology, you know, grandma tell me a story lineup. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I know. The things you learn, right? <laughs> it's like, wow. like I said, 
<laughs> my college degree was geology, specializing in volcanoes, you know, volcanology. So <laughs> this, this is something prosper. <laughs> <laughs> so original. Then <laughs> For all my friends out there who are hating on me going, but what about the Atlanteans and the Lemurians? That's a whole different thing. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal. Plato made up Atlantis as a myth and a parable and part of the, you know, the old stories he had been taught. And then in like the 1860s, I think, let's see. This guy, Ignatius, God, what was his last name? Ignatius something or another. Who, You're asking the wrong person here. <laughs> <laughs> here, wait, I, let me look up his name. Um, no, I can't find his name here. Uh, he was an American congressman and an amateur historian. And like most people in the 1800s, he didn't know, you know, really about science and history. I mean, Darwin was just like being booed at when he gave presentations. And um, so he loved reading Plato. He made up the story of Atlantis, the great city that went to the bottom of the ocean. Ask any geologist. The Atlantic Ocean is, um, is collapsing in on itself and the Pacific Ocean has volcanoes and is expanding. So we have global you know, plate tectonics, but there's no major landmass the size of, what did they see? He said the size of like Asia that would just sink mm -hmm. to the bottom. That's just geologically not possible. However- That doesn't make for a good story. Yeah. So this guy, Ignatius, what's his face, um, wrote the story of Atlantis as though he was writing a history book and it was taught as though it was a history book. Oh, wow. Um, then Robert E. Howard, the science fantasy author, and then his progeny, El Sprague de Camp, you know, they, they're the ones who made up Conan the Barbarian and Kroll the Con Cole the Conqueror. And, you know, so they brought Atlantis up and they were super connected with the, with all the writers, you know, and so um, they, um, you know, spread. But that doesn't mean there wasn't what we call the Atlanteans and the Lemurians their reality is mixed up with this mythology. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when I talk to the librarians, they're very clear. We are not the first humans on this planet. They said we're the third race of humans. We might be the last the way we're going. Yeah, I mean, hell, I'm still trying to figure out how we got to the moon, but, you know, <laughs> that, that's a discussion for a whole other time. <laughs> exactly. So we're running out of time, guys. Another time we will share with you what really is what we call the Atlanteans. That's a name we gave them, but they're not really the Atlanteans. So if you're like, but I love the Atlanteans. I talked to the Atlantean. I was an Atlantean in a past life, but I communicate with the Lamorans. Don't worry. You're good. You're solid. We will explain what all that is next time. And that is very cosmically real. Unless we get sidetracked on something else, because, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do want to talk about the, uh, you said the Atlantean crystals, and I wanted to talk about then Egyptian crystal work and the pyramids all around the world. Yeah. So some we'll of which there. are man-made and some of which are natural occurring. So how would you like other to topic. Yeah. <laughs> natural made. First time I've heard that one, but I could see that. Yeah, no, there's Pyramid Mountain in Antarctica. And that is a natural oh. made mountain that is, I believe, three sides and it is a perfect pyramid. That is from the way the wind blows has like, and the way the ice flows has over the years etched okay. it out, but it's etched sense. it out into a perfect pyramid. But the wind is blowing all over the Antarctic and the glaciers are moving all over. It's only one of the many mountains that's shaped like a pyramid. 
Wow. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into that one because that one's kind of cool. <laughs> it's yeah. the wind doing it. So yeah, wind and water can do all kinds of stuff if you leave it alone high enough velocity and leave it alone for long enough. Yeah, and in the uh, Slavic areas, there are natural occurring pyramid mountains. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. I know. So and then ghosts. Yes. <laughs> now all of my geology friends are going to get mad at me. <laughs> Okay, guys, listen, I'm going to show you our Patreon page one more time. Sorry if I'm redundant, but I really hope that you will join us there because this is where our new membership is going to be. If you become a Paranormal Revolution member with us, you can go with us live when we go go something. You, we are also going to be interviewing a lot of amazing people. Uh, we're, we have a Gary Nicky, um, who's a brilliant shaman. And not just Native American shaman, he's like also global shaman, although he is Native North American and also Asian descent. Fascinating guy. And he's going to share with us why shamans love the full moon so much and about the power of the full moon. We're going to talk with psychic mediums. We're going to go along and, you know, to haunted houses. We, um, I'm trying to get invited to uh, go along on an exorcism. So we have some interesting things. We'll definitely be uh, tag along on some Native American ceremonies and a few other ceremonies. So, um, you know, I'm reaching out to my friends who practice voodoo to see if uh, we can join in on some of those ceremonies. So join with us and you will see a whole new side of the spooks out there. Because we're not afraid of the ghosts. <laughs> yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> it depends upon your definition of afraid <laughs> like i always said you know you want to know why you're afraid of the dark i can tell you why you're afraid of the dark right i know been there <laughs> <laughs> exactly well thank you guys have thank a great day <laughs>